Great morning, great morning to everyone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you all. Yes, make it big, make it big, make it big. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Port City, Mobile, Alabama. Praise God for you, man. Boy, did we have a time on yesterday. Praise God. We're almost ready to begin and get ourselves flowing here. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Bless you all. Good morning, Minister Martha. Good morning, Brother Larry. Bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hey, listen, we're super excited about you joining us this morning for this edition of Inspire AM. We're super excited about what God is doing in your life. Good morning, my daughter, Tiffany McMillan. God bless you all, man. Just a couple of, of, of quick things very quickly. Don't forget, you have I have about five to six slots left in my... Um, in my um, ministering spiritual gifts class with Agape Kingdom Bible College. We're excited about the class. Good morning, Bishop Leonard. Um, we, we're excited about the class. It's going to begin on Thursday night and going to go through Saturday right after lunch. So, man, if you want to understand how God speaks to you and understand your spiritual gifting, um, you want to be a part of this class. The, cl the cost is $50 for the registration. Um, we'll, uh, we'll upload a registration link in the comment section if you'd like to register for that class. Man, it's, it's a life-changing class because it helps us understand how the Father speaks to us in our lives and how we can effectively minister His spiritual gifts in the earthly realm. So that class is coming up starting on um on, on Thursday of this week. So we're in preparation for that. Got to have a couple of great teachers with me. Um, 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 Overseer um, Gwendolyn Lewis and also our prophetess Katrina Lee. They're going to be teaching alongside me in this course. So we're excited about that. Um, let me say thank God for all of our folks who are a part of the Gulf Coast the Kingdom Agenda Gulf Coast Word Experience. Man, what a time we had yesterday. Um, God was amazing. If you missed that experience, you can go out um, back to our page and catch it live. We'll have it uploaded to our, our um, app a little bit later this afternoon because I have to get back into a Wi-Fi area to get it uploaded. Um, but we'll get it uploaded this um, later today, and you can enjoy the Gulf Coast experience by way of playback. Um, there was a great session that I had with Bishop Petway, and let me shout him out this morning, about um, being decisive and decisiveness, being able to make decisions. And, and one of the things that I, I stress in that session was, watch this, that Jesus never made an independent decision. His decision was always attached to the Father's will. His, his decisions were always attached to the Father's instruction. Jesus was not a renegade. He never made independent decisions. He always depended on the Father. He was so dependent on the Father till he said, I and my Father are one. And this is where we got to be careful. We want to be sure that our decision making is made with the mind of Christ. Now, one of the things that I wanted to also touch on in this Gulf Coast experience, and I'm going to stay here just for a moment in this Gulf Coast World experience for today, 
and I, um, when it comes to um, being decisive, when it comes to us being leaders, when it comes to us manifesting um, God's divine will for us, I want to talk about a key word that's going to help govern you in this season. Remember, we're in the in the month of Adar, and we're talking about governmental order and man's flesh. So your flesh naturally does not want to be governed. Your flesh does not want to submit. It is not natural order for you to um, obey those who've been set in leadership over you. That's not your flesh's order. Your flesh, as Paul said, has no good thing in it. It is your natural order to rebel. Um, your flesh is not going to immediately obey in any situation. But there is there is a a, a great um, attribute or a virtue in your character that needs to be developed, and that is willingness. Willingness. Um, one thing that the Father never takes away from us is the ability to choose. Now, what He has sought to do is to bring, and I want to make make a note. We're going to be in Second Corinthians, the eighth chapter. If we can go ahead and post that, Minister Martha, Second Corinthians, the eighth chapter, and I want to work through some things here in this in this in this eighth chapter. Um, um, that are gonna that's gonna help us in 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 moving in the fullness of what God wants to do. Um, yesterday, um, we talked about. Um, this key leadership um, attribute of decisiveness. You have to be able to decide. You have to be able to make a, a an informed decision according to the will of the Father that is going to fit into the vision of what God wants to do. Now, let me say this to you. The vision is not relegated solely to the church. You need to have vision for your life. You need to have a vision for what God wants to do with you personally, as well as corporately through the church and through the kingdom. What about your life? You've not been sent here just to exist, live and die, but God wants to do something with you. Now, one of the things that my pastor, my mentor, my apostle has taught us is that your vision, no matter how many visions you have, uh, or how many people are in a house, your vision ought to fit into the vision of the ministry that you are attached to. In other words, if God has truly sent you to be a part of a particular ministry, you ought to be able to feed by way of your vision into that ministry, and that ministry's vision ought to feed your life. Amen. So if you're sitting in a house or sitting in a ministry that is not developing you individually, then you have a problem of placement. You've got to understand that God is going to put you in a place where you not only draw from the house you're in, but you feed into the house that you're in. And this is in every relationship that you are a part of. You want to be sure that every relationship you're in is reciprocal in nature in that you're feeding it and it's feeding you. My, my, my apostle taught us that God never gives you a vision to work unless the vision works on you. OK, so watch this at a minimum, even if even if it's a one way relationship, as I heard my <laughs> heard my son, uh, um, um, I was listening to my sons and daughters on um, on their broadcast this week. Um, um, that, that, that sometimes relationships are 50, 50, sometimes relationships are 100 and zero. Sometimes the onus is on you to sustain the relationship for a season, but watch this, even though it's 100% on you, you're still receiving the feeding of being strengthened by having to serve and to lead. So everything you do is going to benefit you in some way. Okay. And it should help to help you um, manifest God's vision in your life. But you have to have this concept of willingness. Now, when we talk about willingness, we got to understand that, that, that one of the key things that will keep, keep you in, 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 in a stagnant state is fear. Fear of messing up. Um, 
the, 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 the fear of not getting it right. Let me tell you something. You are going to fail more often than you succeed. You're going to miss the mark more often than you make the mark. But let me give you one of the biggest time savers you can have. That is prayer and obedience. Watch this. Willingness is a quality or state of being prepared to do something. You have a readiness of mind to do something. You, you have to be ready to take action. Now watch this. Remember, let me go back to my four questions at this point to remind you of what we're dealing with in this season. First of all, what's in my hand? What is the potential of the power that I have control of and stewardship of in my life? What's in my hand? What is God's ordinance for it. What is he ordained for me to do with what's in my hand? Will I take action? And this is where willingness is going to plug in today. Will I take action with it? And then finally, what will be the result? What's going to happen when I decide to act? I'm telling you, in the smallest of things, you have to have a willingness and a readiness of mind to do. Watch this. Second Corinthians, the eighth chapter. Let's begin to read just a bit. And watch this. Let, uh, let me throw this in while I'm saying this. Willingness carries a certain amount of risk with it. Risk is a, is a mitigating factor that says it may go well, it may not go well, but I can't stay where I am. I remember the story of the lepers who were sitting outside the city. And the lepers were sitting there and there was food in the city but there was famine in the land. And what they had to deal with was if we go into the city, we may infect the people. We got leprosy. We're, ca we're outcasts. We're not even supposed to be among the healthy population. But they were sitting outside the gate and one asked the others, why sit ye here and die? Why, why are we going to sit here and die when we know there's food over there? Let me tell you something. Many of you, and I feel my help coming, many of you are sitting in situations where you know you are dying and you're sitting there because you're not willing to take the risk of people not liking you. You're not willing to take the risk of doing something different and new. You're not willing to take the risk of, of maybe not being right. But listen, why sit ye there and die? You're sitting there dying. And you're asking God, God, when are you going to move me? I'm waiting on a word of release. I'm waiting on you to do this. Wait a minute, baby. Let me tell you something. God is waiting on you to make some decisions. And I, I'm determined. I'm not going to stay here and stay stay in poverty. I'm not going to stay here and stay without. I'm not going to stay here and stay. You've got to have a willingness in order to manifest what God wants you to manifest. Will you take action? Watch this. 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. Let me begin to read for a second. Hallelujah. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. So the first thing, the first thing that Paul wants us to know, he says that there is grace on the church of Macedonia. Now, let me let me come. Let me come to you a little bit, a little bit closer to home. Watch this. God said, Jesus said, rather, in establishing the church upon this rock, I will build my church. That word church there is the ecclesia. You know the word, the ecclesia. Ecclesia does not refer to brick and mortar. Ecclesia refers to spirit, body, and soul. Ecclesia are the called out ones who've been called out of darkness and into the light. In other words, you've come out of your darkness and non-relationship with the Father, and you now, watch this, have been called into the revelatory relationship whereby God is giving you vision to accomplish something in the earth. You got to take action on what you've got revelation about. And here's the, here's the tragedy. Many of us are asking God for more, and we have not appropriated or used the grace that he's already given us. He's graced you to do a thing and you're doing nothing with the something that he gave you, asking him for everything. Watch this. You, you are, he has graced you and you're doing nothing with the something that he gave you and asking him for everything. You can't keep asking God for more when you won't do anything with less, 
Remember, I taught you a few weeks ago that the less qualifies you for the more. He says that the grace bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that is the ecclesia, the called out ones. Now watch this. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power, watch this, to their power I bear record. Yea, and beyond their, beyond their power, they are willing of themselves. Now watch this. Paul begins to balance here in verse, in, in 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, verse 2 and 3. Watch this, what he says. He says, they've got great trial and affliction, but watch this, in the midst of it, they have abundance of joy. Watch this. Now watch this. They've got deep poverty, but they abound unto riches of their liberality. Now you got to see this. You got to see this. He says they got affliction. They got problems, but there's a joy in them that is negating the affliction. Watch this. He says they've got a deep poverty abounding, but it's unto the riches of their liberality. In other words, they don't have much, but they have a willingness to share what they do have. They Listen, I'm, I'm speaking to you right where you are right now. You can't keep asking God for increase and you're not willing to seed from where you are. Help me, Holy Ghost. He says there's a willingness there, there is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, there is, a, there is a richness of their liberality. See, the liberality is not the stuff, it's the state of heart. Listen, there was a time in our community, and, and I, I'm, I'm going back to a time now, and I'm going to sound a little bit ethnic, and I'm going to sound a little bit, <laughs> I'm going to sound a little bit ethnic and a little bit like Pritchard, Alabama. I remember we, we used to have a slaughterhouse up here in Plateau. Um, I think it was called the Hall Sausage House, but it was a sausage house up here. And 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 what would what would happen was, watch this, watch this. Black folk would leave their community and go up there and get buckets of the throwaway leftover meat from the processing plant. This is when I was a little boy. I was very young, but I can remember this was a part of our community. We could go up there to the sausage place, the grinding shop, and we could get the leftovers, the throwaway, and they would let poor folk have them. You know what they were called? Chitterlings. Chitterlings. Chitlins, as we call them. Chitlins. But watch this. After the chitlins got in demand among the poor, they decided, watch this, we're going to stop giving them away, we're going to monetize them, and we're going to make folks start paying for the chitterlings, the chitlings, the guts, the throwaway. Now, why do I make that point? Because watch this, we were in seasons where we didn't have much, where all we had was sauce meat and crackers. But I can remember sitting at my mother's, my, my grandmother's table at, 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 on Grand Avenue. My brother lives there now, still got the home house in the family. But at Grand Avenue where, 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 where we could all come around the table and they could stretch them lima beans and cornbread till everybody was full. They could make that buttermilk cornbread until everybody left their full. They could, they could find a little meat and a few beans and a little cornbread. And, and I can remember my uncle and them coming in from work, Uncle Jack and my dad and, and everybody and my brothers, they would come in from work and it seemed like the table never ran dry, but we were not rich people. Because it was not, yes, some hoop cheese too. Watch this. Because it wasn't about us being rich. It was about our liberality. It was about our willingness to share. And what you got to understand is if you have a willingness and a liberality, a state of heart that says, I'm going to give to help someone else. We may be in the same place. We may not have nothing but a pound of beans, but I'm going to give you a half pound. I'm going to take a half pound and we're going we gonna to mix these babies up and throw us some whole cake in there with them flatten out pancakes and we all going to eat. It's a spirit of liberality that kept our communities. Now we've gotten, we've gotten so rich. Now we've got so much until we become stingy and we can't be a blessing to nobody. You've been there before. 
You ain't always had it that good. You ain't always had it that good. That's right. All things common. Now watch this where I'm getting to. Verse 3 says, for to their power I bear record. So he says, here's the power that is a part of their witness. Watch this. And beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Here is the willingness. He said this church had a corporate willingness. They were willing of themselves. In other words, watch this. God never takes away your will. He's always going to give us as his created beings, because remember, he created us in his, bless you, Pastor Scott, man, bless you, so good to see you this weekend. Um, listen, he, he it, it's, it's our willingness, and what has happened with the church, and what has caused more division than anything, is we're not willing to be of one heart. We're not willing to serve, in other words, we have not submitted our wills with a readiness of mind with a readiness of mind to be of one heart and one mind so that, watch this, we can accomplish the vision of Christ. Watch this. Bishop pointed out a point just a few minutes ago in the book of Acts where the Bible says that they shared all things common. Watch this. But you know how they got to sharing all things common? Those who had saw what they had and they came into the house and they laid it at the apostles' feet feet for distribution. Let me say this to you, and most of us don't want to accept this as a biblical principle, but the kingdom should be an economic distribution center. The kingdom, the church, should be a place that has resources that they are able to distribute according to the needs of the people with biblical parameters to ensure that we increase, we Listen, that we don't just feed them for a day, but we increase their lives to where they can become distributors themselves. Can I, can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? Oh, God. Network marketing is not new in this world. The church was the first network marketers. The gospel is the first thing that was marketed. Listen, the kingdom is about replication, duplication. And that's, listen, network marketing is a biblical principle. All network marketing is, is mass evangelism in the workplace. That's all it is. It's the same thing. We have a product which is Christ and his principles, which we're trying to pass from person to person and get the person that is passed to to pass it on to more persons and persons so that those persons, watch this, can pass it on to more persons and persons. And what are we doing? The ministry of reconciliation. It's the same thing. But watch this. What we've done is we've abandoned it or rather we've monetized it to the point to where we don't want to share what has enriched our lives. Help me, Holy Ghost. They had a willing, they were willing of themselves. Now watch this. Let me, let me go a little bit further. Verse 4 says, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of ministering to the saints. He says, they pulled us in the ministry because I see the witness of their power, their dunamis, their exousia. I see the authority on their lives, but they don't just have authority. They're willing. They're willing and he says, because of that, we don't have a problem receiving this gift of ministry from them and fellowshipping with them and ministering to the saints. We don't have a problem with that. Listen, oh God, if I could just grab some of our church folks by their spirits and say, listen, we are better together. We are stronger together. What good does it do you to be in a mansion and your brothers in the poorhouse? We're better together. What about the common good of sharing with the saints? What about building up each other first mentally, spiritually, and then materially? Because watch this. We are not commanded to waste our material wealth on foolish people. The proverb, that's why we got to be wise. The proverb says that a fool and his wealth will be separated quickly. So I'm not going to give you wealth and you foolish and you end up wasting the kingdom's resources. 
You got to become a wise steward over the kingdom's resources. If you show me wisdom, then I can put something in your hands. But if you don't show me wisdom, I ain't putting nothing in your hands. If you ain't done nothing with what you have, don't ask for more. Ah, uh, I feel like I'm on a soapbox this morning. But I, I got I got one minute left. Watch this. Watch this. Ah. Verse 5 says, and this they did, not as we hoped, but first, watch this, they gave their own selves unto the Lord and unto us by the will of God. You want to see effective church? You want to see an effective ministry? Folks, give yourselves to the Lord first. Give yourselves to the Lord first. See, part of the problem with, with, with what we're trying to build in the church is we're trying to build a body based on ineffective parts. Let's go to the natural world for a second. If you have an ineffective or dead part, you know what happens to that part in the body? It ends up being cut off. It ends up dying. It may hold a place, but never be effective. Let's talk about body ailments for a minute. Just to, just to use this natural example so you'll understand it. We were talking at dinner yes, yesterday about a young man who, um, uh, who, had, who had injured his leg. He had injured his leg, his lower leg. And what had happened was because of the injury and the lack of medical attention, the bottom half of his leg began to die. This is going to sound really grotesque, but stay with me because you're going to see it in a minute. The bottom half of his leg began to tie. Now, watch this. The danger with the bottom half of his leg dying was not just in his lack of ability to walk because he couldn't walk. He couldn't walk because that, let's say, that right leg. Oh, there we go. Somebody's already on it. No circulation means amputation. That's what you mean. Watch this. That's, that's it exactly. Boy, somebody smart out there. Watch this. This is what it is. Because the leg didn't have any blood circulating, no life in it, it, it not only could not effectively accomplish its purpose, which was to walk and balance the, balance the body and give it mobility, but it came infectious to the rest of the body. Because the infection that it set up in that dead limb began to leak back through the bloodstream into the body and it became a toxin to the rest of the body. Let's use a different example. You, you get an eye injury and you lose your vision. So now you can't see. You, you cannot see. What happens is, watch this, though you cannot see, your other senses have to compensate for you not being able to see. So I've heard people who have a loss of vision or loss of sight or maybe were born blind, that they learn how to identify people by the sound of their voice. So their ear becomes acutely sensitive to the tone and tenor. The rate of speech, the bass, the alto, the soprano, the tone of voice, they get, they get used to hearing through their ears because they don't have their eyes. And so though the eyes, watch this, are placed, they got eyeballs, they don't have vision. They stay in the body, but they're only placeholders that are ineffective. That's how, that's how the body functions. The body compensates. But if it's infectious, then it, become, it can become dangerous to the body. So watch this. What has happened is, watch this, parts of the body have not given themselves to the Lord. And because they have not given themselves to the Lord, they may be in place, but ineffective. Watch this. And if they're not only in place, but ineffective, they may actually be dead and cancerous to the body. And watch this. Paul said that they first gave themselves to the Lord. And what has happened in the body is we're trying to get people to serve who have not given themselves to God first. They haven't given themselves to the Lord first. So why then do we think we can move to the next phase of development? And that is that they give themselves unto you as a leader by the will of God. Listen, you got to be willing. You got to be willing and obedient so you can eat the good of the land. You got to be willing to give yourself to the Lord first. And if you give yourself to the Lord first, then you, be, you can become a benefit to the house that you serve in. 
But you've got to be willing. you got to be willing to mess up and have to make up in order to get to where you got to be. you got to be willing to try. There you, listen, you got to be willing. Give yourself unto the Lord. He, you know, he'll give you an exchange. He'll give you the mind, the mind of Christ. Watch this. Listen. Mm. The mind of Christ is not a one-time gift. I believe the mind of Christ to be an ongoing um, infusion or impartation through the Holy Spirit that we can continually think as Christ thinks. Remember, as I said to you earlier, Christ never made an independent decision. He never made an independent decision. Christ only did what the Father wanted him to do. Let me give you this charge, this charge with the last moments that I have. We need that Gethsemane moment. Gethsemane moment. You remember when Christ said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Let, let this cup pass from me. Let this suffering, watch this, pass from me. But you know what? If the cup had passed, the purpose wouldn't have been fulfilled. Can I say to you, you have a cup that you have sovereignly been set to have to drink from? Let me challenge you on this. You remember when the, when the, when the, when the wife of Zebedee came with her two sons to Jesus? And she said, she said, she said, when you come into your kingdom, will you let my sons one sit on the right and one sit on the left? Will you let my sons rule with you in your kingdom? And Jesus asked the question, can you drink of this cup? And they said, surely we can drink of this cup. But they didn't know that the cup he was talking about was a cup of destiny. And yet it was a cup that was going to pull everything out of who Christ was. They didn't understand that. And I'm saying to you, there's a cup that you've got to drink from. But you got to have the same mindset that Christ had. Jesus said, Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. Let this purpose pass from me. Let this cup, let this, this, this tough thing pass from me. But here's willingness. Nevertheless, see, that's what we need. In our spirit sometime, Pastor Scott, is a nevertheless. No matter what the members do to us, nevertheless. No matter who walks away from us as a leader, nevertheless. No matter, no matter how bad my family forsakes me, nevertheless. No matter, no matter who won't go, nevertheless. If I got to drive myself, nevertheless. If I got to preach all by my lonesome without an amen, nevertheless, we got to get a nevertheless willingness level in us. We got to be willing. We got to be willing. We got to be willing, willing to endure it. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Willingness is a key attribute. Willingness that is having the readiness of mind and the willingness to do a thing. You've got to be willing. You've got to have willingness. And I'm telling you, if you will take on the state of being prepared to do if you will take on, and there's much more in this passage I didn't even get to, but a readiness of mind. If you will just make your mind up that I'm going to do it, regardless, Father. I don't care who goes and who doesn't go. I don't care if I got to go do the ministry by myself. You, you, may, you may be sent to do it by yourself for right now. You got to be willing. And so I, I just want to leave you with that encouragement today. Listen, if you will, share this with someone. And let me say this to you. Willingness is not always just about church work. If you remember, if you didn't, if you didn't hear the testimony of, of, of Elder Keisha Ferris yesterday, you need to go back to the impact experience from yesterday and listen to her testimony. Um, Elder Keisha Ferris, she, she's a, a part of, of Impact, um, uh, one of our in-house elders, and she spoke yesterday about her life. And one of the things she talked about was how one of her one of her, her 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 leaders, her supervisors, would ask her to do things, watch this, that in essence were outside her job description. 
ask her to do things that were outside of what she normally did. But what she later discovered in life is that her willingness to do what was outside her job description was the key to the preparation for her promotion. And I want to say this to you. You got to be willing to do above and beyond in order to ascend and elevate to above and beyond. I love you guys. Hey, Mother Ma is going to pray for us now. Um, again, thank God for the Gulf Coast experience this past weekend. Again, shout out to Bishop Petway and the Eastgate family, Overseer Tanja and the Eastgate family. We thank God for you for a wonderful experience. Minister Mark Moore, um, all, all, everyone who was there to serve, we praise God for you. And, uh, listen, it's been so great being here at home for the Gulf Coast experience. And, um, and, um, Mother Maud is going to pray now and we're going to go onward and upward. Mother, would you please pray? Thank you, Lord. Father God, I come to you right now thanking and praising you for a, a, a day I've never seen before, yet you have blessed us to come before you this morning and receive the teaching of your word. I thank you, glory to God, for this day, for this is a new day, a day, hallelujah, we have come before you to receive the teaching of your word. I thank you, glory to God, how you have opened up our understanding. Let us know, glory to God, it's not going to be easy as leaders, but glory to God, hallelujah, you willed it so over 2,000 years ago that we, as we can, can have come to you, glory to God, when you pulled us out of darkness into this marvelous light, it was to make a difference in this chaotic world. And Lord God, your word told us today, it's not going to be easy. We had to lose some friends. Sometimes we put away from our family. Yes, but the work must be done. You called us to make a difference. We are peculiar people. And glory to God, hallelujah, we have an assignment. Glory to your name. But it must be done. You will do so. Glory to God. We are called to make a difference in this care of the world. I so thank you for the opening up our understanding this morning. The man of God has taught us well. Hallelujah. That we must go forth. Hallelujah. We must be committed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To, to do the will of the Father. Glory to God. It is a blessing for us to come before you early in the morning and receive this a blessed teaching, anointed oh, teaching of your word. Glory to God. I so Grace thank and you. peace to you too, hallelujah. Bishop Gary. We have received it. We are receiving it. Glory to God. We have been taught, hallelujah, hallelujah, how to do the work of the ministry, how to do this kingdom work. It's about building up the, the body of Christ. Uh, calling the people who don't who think they are nobody, glory to God. They think yes, people God. don't love them, but we must yes. love them with the love that you put in our heart. Yes, God. Lord God, I so thank you this morning, glory to God, that we see you differently. We My see God. the work differently. We realize, glory to God, that we that are gonna be ups and downs. Ah, oh, that going to be heartaches, glory to God. But yes, we're going to cry sometimes. But we must keep walking up the King's Highway because this is why we are called to make a difference. Yes, we're God. We're peculiar people. We do peculiar things. But yes, the work God. must go on. I so thank you and I praise you this morning for a that had that. truly brought that word to us. And I pray that everyone has received it, and I know we have. Now let us commit ourselves to do the work of the ministry. This is a time, hallelujah, when every part of the body should be working. Glory yes, to God. God. I thank you that I pray to you. As you return virtue unto a positive Love Lord, you. I pray that you will continue to bless him and lay the more, Father God, as they continue to teach us the word of God. Hallelujah. I pray for everyone that impact individual and collective and, and every king connected and in the friend. Everyone on this side we have a peace word. I pray that apostles would have no lack. Glory to God that you bless him mentally, physical, spiritual, and financially. That he will keep on teaching the word of God. Glory to God, we are receiving it. I pray your blessing upon each and every one on this line this morning. As we go forth, let us make a difference. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father God, for this divine word of this morning. Lord God, our Father, and our our Father said, "Now be thy name, that kingdom come, that will be done here in the earth as it is in heaven." Lord God, I said, thank you right now for this new day, a new hour, new minute, new second. Lord God, thank you right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we have the opportunity to walk the land on today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you right now for the unity, God, and Lord God, throughout this day. Thank you for the ministry, thank you, Lord God, throughout this day, Lord God. Thank you for your word, God, something of uh throughout today, Lord God, to uh enhance our uh spirit to our being, Lord God, more Father God. Father God that will make a difference with us, Lord God, for the kingdom of God, Lord God, 
saying? Thank you right now, Lord God, for being you are our Savior, Lord God. You are our keeper, Lord God. You are our we hope with that love, Lord God, as we hope with Jesus, Lord God. You guys, we hope with our Father, Lord God. Thank you for doing great, Lord God. Going throughout this day, Lord God, as well as throughout this week, Lord God. Thank you right now that, Lord God, this week is blessed, Lord God. Our Monday, our Tuesday, our Wednesday, our Thursday, our body, our Saturday, and our Sunday, Lord God. Blessed, Lord God. Father God, thank you right now, Lord God, because you are our shepherd, Lord God. Say thank you right now, Lord God, as you are. Uh, as we lean and depend on you, Father God, and all you are, Lord God. Father God, thank you right now for keeping the hospital and his family, Lord God. Thank you for keeping our mother part, Lord God, stripping her body, Lord God, from her head down to her clothes or her feet, Father God. Stripping her knees, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Say thank you right now for giving great to her body, Father God. Father God, say thank you right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I long you, Lord God. In Jesus name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Listen, Father, we praise you. We thank you now for allowing us this time together. We ask you to bless Overseer Mother Ma more and bless Evangelist Victoria, Victoria Coleman as they have prayed and interceded for us today. Bless all of us as we stand in the gap for others who are in need in the kingdom. Allow our willingness now, God, to be a great virtue in us, that we are willing and obedient to do the will of the Father. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Listen, we praise God for you joining us this morning. We we thank you for uh, being with us for another session of Inspire AM. You can pick up uh, by call if you want to call in through the conference line. You can dial 712-775-7099, access code 789-111. Um, that's 712-775-7099, access code 789-111, and you can simply hit your pound sign to receive um, the call by audio. Or you can go to our Impact app. Listen, download the Impact app. There's a wealth of information and teaching materials out there for you that are free for your use. Use anything there. Um, I don't I don't have a patent on the Word of God. Anything I've taught, you can teach. I have no problem with it at all. Go take it. Make it your own. Study it out and get it in your good, but you can teach it. Um, get out there and um, you can pick it up in the... Um, the um, um, Inspire AM section of the app and you can get an audio or you can go ahead and go to our video. And if you hit the video, you'll be able to see this broadcast again played through our YouTube channel. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel too also. There's great teaching out there that will be a blessing to your life. Bless you, Minister Lawson. How you doing, sir? Listen, we praise God for you. As always, be inspired, be lifted, and go manifest. Have a great day.